Okay, this is number three from the 2010 Form B AP Physics B exam. This is primarily an electrostatics problem. We've got two negative charges uh, connected with a string separated by a distance of 0.02 meters. We know their values of charge, and uh, we can ignore all kind of kinds of outside effects. Uh, if, it's really just dealing with the string and the two objects, and we want to know the tension in the string. Well, these two suckers are oppositely charged. Er, <laughs> Yeah, right. They have like charges, and like charges like to repel each other, so the negative charge is trying to push the other negative charge away equally. And the thing holding it together is the string itself, so the tension in this string is quite simply the electrostatic force. This is just a hidden way of saying what is the electrostatic force between these two charges. So I'll lead off by recognizing that you are looking for tension, so either F sub T or capital T. And that will equal maybe your electrostatic force. You could set up your dynamics too. It's just appropriate if you said sigma F equals zero equals blah, blah, blah up top. That's fine. Now we're going to recognize that the tension is equal to the equation for the electrostatic force, KQ1, Q2 over the distance between them squared. I'll go ahead and sub. Toss in those units too. So we've got uh, 9 by 10 to the 9 for K. This is a constant. That'll be Newton meter squared per uh, Coulomb squared. You've got the charge of each, and we don't need to worry about the negative. Don't don't plug in the um, sign here. We've we are we already can determine the direction based on whatever charge we're looking at, which way the string has to pull on it, and it's going to be different for each charge anyhow. And we just want to know the actual tension, so none of that's really necessary. Four by ten to the negative nine coulombs, and there's two of them. So we can just go ahead and square this term if we wanted to. Or I could write it down again, it doesn't matter. The distance between them is 0.02 meters, and we do need to square that value. And you toss that into your calculator, you get 3.6 by 10 to the 4 newtons. 10 to the negative 4 newtons, sorry. Now we want to draw the electric field between the two objects. Uh, electric field lines have a bunch of rules you got to make sure you follow. Ultimately, you got to remember that field lines point towards negative charge. You always want to represent the entire region of space, not just the space in between them. So even on the opposite sides, it could be helpful. So for example, we know over here we've got electric field coming in from maybe an infinite point. And then we've got some other electric field that's kind of curving in here. It's being affected by other charges. And uh, the guys that are in the center here, they're going to appear to approach from a point of infinity or, or not of actually, con uh, no, no, no point of convergence, I guess is the right way of saying it. So when you have your field lines here, what we're looking for is a bunch of stuff. None of these field lines can cross. They all need to be pointing towards the negative charges respectively. No field should exist in between them, uh, and you should represent everywhere around it pretty pretty well, not just one side. All right, now we are given the masses of the two particles, and we're going to cut the string. We want to know the initial uh, acceleration of each object. Well, this is kind of, uh, this is more or less Newton's laws in general. We have two things we've got to recognize here. They're both good experience in the equal 3.6 by 10 to the negative Newton force outward. The negative on one side pushes the negative on the other side equally as the other one pushes it back. So they're both good experience in the same force. We also have to recognize that relationship between F equaling MA. So that means the overall acceleration of, say, the first particle will be the tension we calculated above. We can just indicate that as F net. You could write that as tension down if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and just write F net. And we're going to divide that by the mass of the first particle. So 3.6 by 10 to the negative 4 newtons divided by 0 0.03 kilograms. We're going to get 1.2 by 10 to the negative 2 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of the first particle. The second particle will have the same formula, but the only difference is the mass. So it'll be the same force up top. We're just going to use M2 now. So 3.6 by 10 to the 4 newtons, negative 4 newtons. We're going to divide that now by 0 0.06 kilograms. It's twice as massive, so we should get a value that's half as uh, great in acceleration. We do. 6 times 10 to the negative 3 meters per second squared. 
kind of ran out of space down here. Oh, well. Now we want to sketch uh, qualitatively the acceleration of object mass 2 versus distance after the string has been cut. So basically, they're getting further and further and further apart. What's happening to their acceleration? Uh, you got to recognize the acceleration is indeed changing. It's decreasing as you get further and further and further away. Uh, the tension, or not the tension, the original force decreases because of this r squared value. It not only decreases, but it decreases at a square rate. So we're looking for a downward curve that's approaching d. Uh, it's approaching zero. Uh, it'll never get there. You also need to start this acceleration at the at the non-origin because they started uh, 0.02 meters apart. So you really should start this curve not right at the y-axis. So we're looking at a curve that's approaching the x-axis, but never going to get there. It's never going to get there. I don't think you needed to do this dashed line, nor do I think uh, that you need to indicate the actual distance. But the answer key has it here, so I just want to include it just in case. Uh, I think really what we're looking at is a acceleration that began at some non-zero distance that decreased uh, at a square rate. And then we want to describe qualitatively what happens at the speed of the object as time increases, assuming the objects remain on the horizontal, non-conducting, frictionless surface. So what happens to their motion as they continue to move further and further and further apart? And I see a lot of students kind of mix this kind of problem up because they think, oh, well, the acceleration is decreasing, so ultimately, eventually, that means the objects are slowing down. That's not what that means at all. It means that the rate in which they're increasing speed is decreasing. So really what you should be indicating is that both particles their speeds will continue to increase as time increases so they will get faster and faster and faster but the rate in which that increase changes will decrease i.e. the acceleration will decrease so indicate that the speed goes up but the acceleration goes down approaching constant velocity at a distance of infinity because at a distance of infinity the acceleration will be zero, therefore the particles will then travel at nice constant uh, speeds. Okay, that is it for this wonderful electrostatics problem. Thank you.